Most gracious and all wise God, we come before you, Lord, just saying thank you, thank you, thank you. Lord, I thank you how you kept us. I thank you how you brought us from danger seen and unseen. Lord, I thank you how you have just made a way for us, uh, especially those times when it seems like we couldn't figure out what, what our next move was going to be. But you're such an awesome God. You're such a never-failing God. You're such a merciful God. You're such a gracious God. And for that right now, we're just saying thank you. Lord, I thank you for each person that's on this call. I thank you for their life. I thank you for their trials, their struggles, their tribulations that have brought them to this point of wanting to learn more about you. Because... It's been you guiding them all along in the background. It's been you uh, being that force that has kept them safe, uh, that has kept us safe. And for that, once again, Lord, I'm just saying thank you. Now, for this class today, Lord, uh, I'm asking that you open up our minds, open up our hearts, that we may internalize this lesson on how to pray and that ultimately you get the praise, glory, and honor as we share this lesson with others as to how simple it is to pray so that we can have communion with you. Lord, we bless you, praise you, magnify you, and glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. All righty. We have launched a new series, Men's Month series. Um, it is entitled Praying When It's Hard to Pray. And there are times that it seems like we can't get a prayer through. There are times that it seems like we don't know um, what we should be doing in order to get a prayer through. So, uh, a few years ago, I had recorded a voicemail message that went like this. Hello? Hello? Hello, I, I can barely hear you. I I think I heard you. Can you speak up? No, I'm just kidding. I'm not here. Uh, leave me a message and I'll get back with you. Well, needless to say, there were a few folk that didn't find that too amusing. There were a few folk that uh, left me some choice words until I changed that that greeting. And as funny as it was for me, uh, that seems to be exactly what it seems that prayer is like for a whole lot of folk. That they have just dialed up God and they're hoping to hear from him, needing to hear from him, only to seem like he's not there. So, although prayer is essential to every believer's everyday existence, we either are not praying or we're not praying as much as we ought to be praying. So, we're going to take a look at our lesson and to see how our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ taught us to pray and taught us to pray with power. Uh, how many of you have ever felt like you're playing that cosmic game of hide and seek with God? That, uh, you calling out to him, nothing is being heard. You're looking at all the old familiar places. You're coming to church. You're going to Bible study. You, you're doing, you're doing, and there's nothing as if God is playing a game. And it's not a very funny one. Uh, because 
One of the things that we know for sure is desperation can turn into defeat rather quickly, especially for our people. Uh, but what if God wasn't hiding from him, from you? What if actually he's waiting to hear from you? What if God wasn't avoiding you, but he was actually inviting you to join him in silence? We get so busy doing a little bit of this and a little bit of that, so much to the point that it, it seems like we're dancing and, yes, we, we don't dance real well. So... Back in the mid, maybe early 80s, mid 80s, there was a preacher. He was an assistant minister here, and he befriended my dad. Uh, his name was Reverend Kojo Asewusu. And Reverend Kojo uh, and Dad had a great discussion one day on prayer. And he said, Brother Birch, you should pray to God with the frequency that as you get ready to take your next step, you should ask God, okay, left foot, right foot. And instantly I thought, there's no way that I'm going to, okay, God, do I close my eyes and, and ask, do I take my, do I take the next step? Is by then, I'd be done tripped and failed. So it was at that point that I also found out that our conversation with God can be ongoing without us having to take a certain posture. That all we have to do is just like we talk to a friend. Just like we carry on a conversation, that's how we talk to God. And what I found is that my life took off in a different trajectory when I learned to do so. Uh, there's a passage that uh, Paul wrote to the church at Thessalonica in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17. And it simply says one phrase, pray without ceasing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Some of us do good to pray once or twice a day. Some of us do good to even fathom a thank you when we get ready to eat a banana. Or mm -hmm. uh, you, you will learn, that's right. During our 2023 Unity service, pastor exhorted us to follow Peter's instruction in 1 Peter 5 and 7, where Peter tells us to cast our cares on Christ. Why? Because he cares for us. Now, once again, this is something that we can't always fathom because we usually trying to handle stuff ourselves. We usually try to feel, we, we feel like we failures if we're not fixing our own problems. And that poses some problems. So here's one of those points to ponder that I have put in my lesson that's not in the lesson proper. And that point to ponder is, what are some of the things that prevent us from praying? Star six to respond. Or for those that are present. We get too busy. We get too busy. We're too tired. Ego. Ego. Our we say ego. the same thing over and over again. We don't sound like we know what we need to say. 
Yes, ma'am. By things we feel are more important. Okay. Right. That's right. There are some that think that our request is too small. That's right. There are some that have an actual lack of faith. Right. I was told by one person, I, I don't really know how to do all of that. I, I don't really know how to pray. I didn't grow up doing that kind of stuff. Uh, it's not important enough. Then I heard one other person that she had just lost her boo uh, of about 40 some odd years and it was sudden and she said, I don't know how to direct this grief anywhere. She said, I ain't even been able to cry. Mm. I can't talk to God because I don't feel he's listening. I'm too angry to pray right now. And so it was from there that I was able to have a conversation with her to tell her to even express that anger. And we're going to learn in our last lesson that that's something that's kind of crucial for us to do. It's okay to get angry, but it's what you do with that anger that makes all the difference in the world. Anyone who is committed in their heart to pray has found it hard to pray. There are times when praying seems difficult, and I'm going to give you a little hint for the last lesson. I have polled maybe 20, 30 uh, prayer warriors that I know across the nation, and I asked them that same question. And their answers seem to fall within four areas. Divisiveness, in, in divisiveness, pride, and sin. What letter is what letter is common to all four of those? Divisiveness, indivisiveness, pride and sin, that letter I. That is what's common to all of those. And a whole lot of times when we have put ourselves in the way, that's when we don't we can't find a way to get a prayer through. Now here's the thing. We can't make it through this life if we don't pray. In fact, the more often we pray, the more often, the less often we will become flayed. What do I mean by flayed? All right. There are times that I, I know... Those of you that are cooks have drudged something in a batter. Uh, and you usually don't just put it in and be careful and take it back out. You usually slap it around in the egg whites or you, you put it in something in order to, because the next thing you're going to do is drop it, put it in the bag. The next thing you get ready to do is drop it in some hot grease. But that's what it's like to be flayed, where you get tossed about, you get smacked around, and then you get thrown in some hot grease. Well, the more that you pray, 
the less that that happens. The frequency by which we pray becomes the vehicle by which we experience God's power. We experience the our Christian walk at its finest. The ironic part is that every person, regardless of their belief system, prays. The funny part is the few atheists that I do know that have prayed don't know if their prayer is getting through to anybody because they don't have that belief system that we have. Uh, but one of them told me, i just been saying something. I, I don't know if, if if it's really coming true. I don't know. i I just been talking. I said, well, keep talking. Uh, you, you're going to experience something one day that that is going to help you tremendously. The problem for many of us is we feel inadequate in our wording. We don't know the right words to say. We feel like we're fumbling. Like Sister Amanda just said a few minutes ago, sometimes it seems like you're just saying something to be saying something. Well, the one time that we always can get a request in is when we have a prime time problem. That's usually when we're really ready to talk to God. Okay? So, what is prayer? Prayer is all about taking the things you do naturally and making them supernatural. What do I mean? How many of you have recently cheered for your favorite sports team. How many of you have cheered for a victim? Victim. They got victory recently. Well, if you are cheering that situation, then guess what? You now know how to worship. Because basically all you're doing is cheering whoever on. Now, the ideal person to be cheering in our lives is God. Okay? So. But most of the time, like I'm going through something, I pray, it's short, but I say, God, please give me some strength to endure right. and make me work it out the right, do it the right way. Right. That, that's just about my... That, that, that's all that's necessary. It, that way I the, use it too. The length, the length of the prayer okay. it is not what's important. I, I never pray on what, what is important is the sincerity behind it. Remember, in fact, if you remember when my favorite apostle was about to sink and drown, his quickest prayer, it wasn't Father God, Abraham, Isaac, and Jason. All he had, was, all he said was just save me, Lord. And instantly he was saved. So, if you ever said I'm sorry and meant it, then you already know how to confess. If you've ever been worried about anything, then you know how to meditate. If you've ever talked, <laughs> I found this rather amusing. Uh, if you ever talked to a friend for hours, or an extended period, mm -hmm. then you also know how to talk with God. Because one of those things that you'll find is once you get to talking, you, you don't want to stop. Uh, and if you've gone through some of the fun things that I've recently gone through, you'll know that 
having a conversation, okay, God, I need your help with my next breath. Uh, I, I'm not breathing too good right now. So to carry on the conversation about your breath, carry on the conversation about you not resting, to carry on the conversation about how if he doesn't help you, you know you're not going to make it. Then before you know it, two hours has passed and you're waking up because finally you were able to settle down enough that you've been able to sleep. Or, as my sister just said, you find yourself still talking because there's enough things on your heart that you feel comfortable doing. Well, let's jump a little bit harder into our lesson, and we're going to see the methodology that our Lord taught us to pray. And in doing so, prayerfully, we'll learn how to do it more competently, more effectively, and more frequently. Well, it has been stated that Jesus prayed a minimum of three times a day. But it was the request of the disciples that it was the request of the disciples for him to teach them how to pray that allowed them to observe a couple of more things. Like any good Hebrew, it was customary that you prayed at least three times a day. You pray the morning prayer, which is called the Sekeret, because that was the prayer for the blessings and the request of the daily needs for that day. <clears throat> you had an afternoon prayer called the Minka, which was a prayer usually of confession and contrition, because usually by the afternoon you didn't mess up. You done said something. You done done something. You done cussed. I mean, you, well, I'm sorry. I got a little scared away. By the evening prayer, the Arbeth, the prayer was something to commit yourselves to the daily service of God. And it was usually something that every Jewish person did on a consistent basis. David says, morning, noon, and night, my complaints and groans go up to him. And here's that lovely part. He will hear my voice. That's what he says in Psalm 55, verse 17. So, having the disciples, both the men and the women, Having seen Jesus pray some 25 to 38 times, and usually often in a secluded location, they desired it to learn how to pray just like he did. In fact, if you look at the Bible, for some specific times that Jesus prayed, you'll see there's a whole list there that is not exhaustive of what I included. Uh, one of the times that he prayed was he got out of the way in Luke chapter 5, verse 16, right after he'd healed a man with leprosy because he wanted to be able to talk to God about it. And us too. There are times that we need to be all alone with Christ our Lord so we can tell God, we often make this statement that uh, I don't want to complain because I ain't got nobody to complain to. Yes, you do. <laughs> Songwriter said, I must tell Jesus. He and he alone. Okay? So, uh, and you notice that there are some special occasions that he prayed, like after he got baptized. Uh, before you prepared the meal, before you got ready to fix whatever it is, you're asking for everything to work out fine, okay? 
you see those passages there uh, before any important decision. So you will have peace. You, you see that those passages are there. Well, not only did we see him praying, but there are numerous times that he taught on prayer. Like Matthew 21 and 22, where he says absolutely everything, ranging from small to large, as you make it a part of your believing prayer, gets included as you lay hold of God. In Mark chapter 11, verses 24 and 25, he says, that's why I urge you to pray for absolutely everything, ranging from small to large, including everything as you embrace this God life and you'll get everything. And when you assume the posture of prayer, remember that you're not all not all about asking. If you have anything against someone, forgive. Uh oh. Only then will your heavenly father be inclined to wipe your slate clear of your sin. And if you say, Well, I haven't sinned Guess what? You just got through lying. Okay? Uh, in Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 through 11, he says, don't bargain with God. God, if you just get me up out of... He says, don't bargain with God. Be direct. Ask for what you need. This isn't a cat and mouse hide and seek game we're in. If your child asks for bread, do you trick him with sawdust? If he asks for fish, do you scare him with a live snake on his plate? As bad as you are, you wouldn't think of such a thing. You're at least decent to your own children, hopefully. So don't think that God who conceived you in love will be in any better. Don't you think he'll be even better? Then um, in the upper room discourse in John chapter 14 started verse 13 he says from now on whatever you request along the lines of who I am and what I'm doing I'll do it. That's how the Father will be seen for all who is in the Son. I mean it. Whatever you request in this way, I'll do. Then if you jump over to John chapter 15, verse 7, he says, But if you make yourselves at home with me and my words are at home in you, you can ask anything. Uh... And then he has to give us that reminder in verse 16. You didn't choose me. Remember, I chose you and put you in the world to bear fruit, fruit that won't spoil. As fruit bearers, whatever you ask the Father in relation to me, he gives you. So, uh... Then over in John chapter 16, we found out last night, uh, starting at verse 23, he says, you'll be longer, uh, you'll no longer be so full of questions. This is what I want you to do. Ask the Father for whatever is keeping, is in keeping with the things that you, that I reveal to you. Ask in my name, according to my will, and he'll most certainly give it to you. Your joy will be a river overflowing its banks. Then on the Sermon on the Mount, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 44, he says, I'm telling you to love your enemies. Do what? Let them bring out the best in you, not the worst. Hmm. Right. He says, when someone gives you a hard time, respond with the energies of prayer. So, 
Uh, then in Matthew chapter 18, verses 19 and 20, he says, But when two of you get together on anything at all on earth and make a prayer of it, my Father in heaven goes into action. And when two or three of you are together because of me, you can be sure I'll be there. And there's nothing more powerful and the true Lord's Prayer is found in John chapter 17. And part of that prayer still covers us today. Uh, chapter 17, verse 20 says, I'm praying that not only for them, talking about the disciples, but also for those who will believe in me because of them and be my witnesses about me. The goal is for all of them to become one heart and mind, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, so that they might be one heart and mind with us, and the world might believe that you, in fact, sent me. Well, there are two times in particular that we see he's taught us to pray. And the first of which, once again, is a part of the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 6, starting at verse 13, starting at verse 9. He says, pray like this. Our Father in heaven, where your name be kept holy, may your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need. And forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. And then in Luke chapter 11, when the disciples uh, once again asked him to pray, Luke records it and he says, Jesus said, this is how you should pray. Father, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. Give us each day the food we need and forgive our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation. So as we delve into this model that each of us, uh, there was a book that I was reading as I was going through this by Jared Stevens called Praying Through, and he suggests basically that there are five parts to this prayer that we need to focus on. The first of which is wow. The second of which is please. The third is help. Fourth part is thanks. And the last part is yes. So as we consider each part, Let's take a look here. When we take a look at the wow, we are praying to our Heavenly Father. We are saying, our Father in Heaven, may your name be kept holy. Uh, this is a statement of relationship. So, when you start that wow prayer off, you are saying to God, you are telling God something about himself. Now, this ain't because God needs to hear this. This is for you so that you have it in your brain as to who God is, such as, God, you are deserving of all glory. God, you are generous. God, you are holy. God, you are loving. God, you are merciful. God, you are so patient with David. I mean, I'm sorry. I just got a little confused there. So there there are some things that you, you can be able to fill in the blank. Because once again, God doesn't need that reminder of who he is. We do. And after we establish who God is, that's when we start telling him our needs. 
Be mindful that he is a loving parent who desires to give us the things that, the good things that we request. So, it might be that you need a breakthrough. It might need a, it might be that you are in need of a money matter. It might mean that you are in need of a relationship to be healed. <clears throat> There's some things that you're going to find that only God can do in your life. Like, the only way that we can be saved is if he does the saving. Because when we try to save ourselves, boy, we end up like Peter. Thinking. I think I'm not old enough. You know. Mm-hmm. To kill my nerves, I need to pray so I won't break up. There you go. You know it, though, right? Right. I know I love her, I know I don't want her, but sometimes I want why she's in trouble, but she's coming to help me. Right. She's on my head. So we usually need to take that position of being open hearted and empty handed. Because mm-hmm. if our hands are already full, we don't have room to receive anything. We need to be willing to trust that God will give us all that we need to take care of us no matter what. So we have the wow, we have the please, we have the help. What is it that we need help with? We just got through studying some F words. And uh, one of the ones that many of us have a problem with is forgiveness. So to tell our loving father that we need help with forgiveness is difficult because the main culprit that needs forgiveness is us. In both models, he said, request forgiveness for the things that you've done against yourselves and especially others. Forgiveness is not for the offender. It is for our betterment. Uh, So what have you done that you need to request forgiveness? Nothing? If that's what you're saying... And you need to request forgiveness right then and there because you done lied. We are selfish and prideful creatures that desire lots of things just for ourselves. So what do we need to do? We need to take the time to unburden ourselves with those things that only God can help us with. Like forgiveness. Like faithlessness like fear, like fleshy things. In fact, R.H. Palmer said in the late 1800s, he said, ask the Savior to help you. Comfort, strengthen, and keep you. And guess what? He is willing to aid you. And not only is he willing to aid you, but he will carry you through. In fact, he is only one ask away. So, after we say help, the next thing we need to say is thanks. What do we have to be thankful for? Everything. And the Bible, this is the part I love, the Bible is tattooed with nothing but signs of thankfulness. First Chronicles 16, verse 32, he says, Give thanks to God, for he is good, and his love never quits. Over in Psalm 100, verse 4, he says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving, 
and then go to his courts with praise and give thanks to him and praise his name. My favorite translation says, enter with the password, thank you. Make yourselves at home, <clears throat> taking praise, thank you, and worship him. Now, this was a difficult one, but it's one that I know to be true. First Thessalonians 5 and 18. I just had surgery. I was just waking up in my room, and the first thing I focused on was a sign across the my bed on the wall that said, in all things, give thanks. Well, I was really in pain. And I was really having difficulty being thankful for that pain until I focused my eyes on the who was holding my hand, and it was my surgeon. And I said, uh-oh. What is going on here? And he said, I just wanted to make sure you were all right because most people in your situation, the results would have been disastrous. He said, there was nothing but a blood-filled tumor. And he said, that is indicative of cancer. He said, but when we tested there was no trace of cancer. Now we want to do some additional treatment, but it's not because you have cancer. And he said, and I just wanted to hold on because I don't see this too often, especially in a young man. So back to that sign, it said, in all things, give thanks. In fact, the message translation says, thank God no matter what happens. You will. Thank God no matter what happens. This is the way God wants you who, are be who belong to Jesus Christ to live. He didn't say thank God for what happened. It says thank God no matter what happens. And the one thing that we need to learn in life is that no matter what situation we find ourselves in, it can always be worse. Okay? So, thank him now. Thank him later. In fact, the more you think, the more you'll think. The more you think, the more you'll think. And when you start learning to thank God for the little bitty thing, those other things will blow your mind. Didn't have any money to buy another toothbrush at one point, and my toothbrush fell and was headed towards the toilet. <laughs> but instead it hit the ground. And I said, thank you, God, because I didn't have money to, and at that time I, I had some habits that made my breath atrocious, so I needed that toothbrush. <laughs> so, there's nothing like the good close of a prayer at the end of a day. And the best way to close a prayer is with a good old-fashioned dose of truth. When you close your prayer with the word amen, you are saying that everything that has been stated up to now is truthful. So, whatever you turned over to God will be worked out. Notice I said whatever you turned over, mm -hmm. not whatever you turned over and then picked it back up. Yeah. It's whatever you turned over. Mm -hmm. No matter how bad the situation may be, you need to keep your eyes, according to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, keep your eyes on Jesus, 
who began and finished this race we're in. Study how he did it, because he never lost sight of where he was headed. You know, we get distracted. Oh, squirrel. We, we get distracted so easy. Okay. He, was, he knew where he was headed, that exhilarating finish in and with God, so he could put up with anything along the way. And there were some things he had to put up with, the crawl, shame, whatever. And now he's there in place of honor right alongside God. There's nothing like a powerful way to close God because God is not man who's given to lies and not a man of changing his mind. Uh, does he speak and not do what he says? No. Does he promise and not come through? No. But we can always count on him. So, yes, you can say, I believe you are with me. You can say, yes, I know you hear me. You can say, yes, I know that you are faithful. I know that you've been faithful. So, as we go through our day, make sure from the start of the day to the end of the day that you take the time to say, wow, please help, thanks, and yes. In fact, there's nothing like the present time to get started. So what are some things that we can say wow to God about? His awesomeness. Waking us up this morning. He's a keeper. We had our right mind. That's correct. We didn't put our shoes on our fans. That that is the most true statement that we right. 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 So there's always something that we have to wow God with. <laughs> so not only do we have something to wow God with, we have something to ask him to please do something for us. So what are some of those things that we need to be putting in the please section. Health. Our health. Making us better. Oh, Lord. Patience. Our family. Our family. Yes, most definitely. Our family. Yeah, that's when, top back. When, when they own the bus, they don't have to worry about being pepper sprayed or have to worry about being shot when they get off the bus. Oh, driving down the street. Right. Road rage. Yep. What are some other things that we have to... Uh, Ask God to please help us with. How to be more faithful. How to be more faithful. Keeping us focused on him. Keeping us focused on him. Keeping our focus on him. I guess that was time of being a better servant. Most definitely. Then there are times that we just need to say, God, help. Oh, man. I need that now. 
There, there are plenty of things that he needs to help us with. Right. I'm glad that you hear that. I hear that. Then there are times that we just need to have a good old thank you session. What do we need to thank God for? We need to thank God for everything. We need to thank him that, uh, as we already said, we woke up putting our shirt on our arms, not on our legs. Uh, If we woke up in pain, that we were able to take a little something. Uh, The fact that we were able to verbalize that we were in pain, because there's some that might be in pain and can't say a thing. Uh, So there are a lot of things to say thanks for, and then there's nothing like that powerful yes, acknowledging that God is God. So what do we need to do? Be thankful for the simplicity of prayer, yet the power that it contains. We need to share with others how praying the simplest of prayers got you through some difficult moments in your life. Lord, save me. That's the simplest prayer. Remind some and let others know that even in death, Christ prayed for us. Giving is the best done with a prayerful heart. And you should never, we have some moments of prayerlessness, but we don't ever need to let our whole day go by, let alone our whole life, without saying wow, without saying please, without saying help, without saying thanks, and most definitely without saying yes to God. Next week, we'll be in the book of Daniel, chapter 9, and we'll take a look on what it means to pray on purpose. So, I thank you for joining us today. Pray that something's been said that uh, has brought about a change in how we think brought about a transformation in what we do and as we conclude our lesson today I'm going to do something I don't normally do uh, but I thought it was kind of poignant based on our lesson today. And that is, I'm using part of the model that we just got through learning, and we're going to use that as we close out in prayer. So, Jesus, thanking you, Lord, for giving me a way to pray when I didn't know what to say. Thank you for teaching me just as you taught your disciples. Help me not to overcomplicate prayer by trying to say words that don't have a good specific meaning. Remind me that you are not seeking perfection in prayer, but you've given me an invitation to transform through prayer. Thank you that you know me. (laughs) Thank you that you love me. Thank you that you hear me. And thank you that you are with me right now. Thank you that even as I pray this prayer, you teaching me to pray. Yes, you are an awesome God. And I thank you. Amen. Amen. All righty.